In the secret world, even the most straightforward events can actually be more complex once we look beneath the surface. Hello, welcome to Questions and Answers, a Secret World Legends lore series where I seek the answers, but also seek to ask the right questions. Today, I want to look at the fall of Innsmouth Academy. It seems fairly straightforward at first. The fog came in, and people walked out to sea just like everywhere else. Equally straightforward is our pursuit of Beaumont. After we run into him in the tunnels, he came to Innsmouth Academy to get the sword, where, in the secret library, he uses it against us. The only problem with this is, it's basically incorrect in every single detail. First, let's start with the fog and the siren song. It seems like places that were warded were not affected by the siren song. The hippie camp, the church, the Wabanaki trailer park, and even the Franklin Mansion in its own way. They were all magically protected, and so the people in them were safe. So why, out of all the warded places, did they only fail at Innsmouth Academy? Well, I believe they did not fail at all. At least, not until well after the fog event. Note that none of the students who were behind the walls actually turned into zombies. There is the rival high school who was vandalizing their field, but they weren't students, so it's likely they were not protected by the wards. There is the Innsmouth track and field, however, because there isn't a track, it's likely they were caught off campus when the fog hit. According to Carter, everything went bad during the Halloween prom. We can see this because she's wearing a Halloween costume under her hoodie. Very cute skeleton leggings. I find it unlikely that Coach Rourke would have had the team practicing on prom night, since the initial fog event only lasted 30 minutes or so, according to Tyler Freeborn. It's likely the school remained functional for some time after the fog. I doubt the teachers were unaware of what happened outside, but they were probably trying to hide it from the students for the time being. So we have a brief window between when the fog hit and the Halloween prom. It couldn't have been too long, because otherwise people would have been more concerned about the absence of the track and field team. From the calendar in Eleanor Franklin's attic, we know this is October 2012. According to Deputy Andy, the dead came back on Halloween. From multiple sources, we already know that there are several days between the fog and the dead returning. However, if we're establishing a timetable for the fall of Innsmouth Academy, this is misleading. See, prom is traditionally held on a Saturday, so the fall of Innsmouth Academy likely took place on the 27th of October. This creates a timetable. We have the fog, 24 to 48 hours in my estimation, and then the Halloween prom. Now here's an interesting little thing. We know that old bones of the island rose from their graves. However, people who died after the return did not raise as zombies. We can find numerous examples. People who were recently deceased when the fog hit, such as the real Ellis Hill, did not come back. We also know that people who died during the fog but did not make it out to sea, such as all these car crashes in Blue Mountain, also rose as zombies. The relevance is that from this we can deduce that the teachers who escaped from Innsmouth Academy escaped during the fog. Thus, they were exposed to it. Otherwise, so many of them would not raise as zombies. And the ones who made it a bit further would have. That also means the veritable parade of horribles hanging out near the boathouse were already there long before the dead came back. This means that the Scarecrows, the Revenants, the Deep Ones, the Drog, were already lying in wait as soon as the fog hit. It was not merely the fog. Far from it. Innsmouth Academy was attacked. The evidence of this is everywhere. The holes in the outer walls. The gate ripped off its hinges from the outside. This side door, which something large clearly had to break through to even fit this room where somebody clearly tried to make a stand, and the only person with the power and motive to attack Innsmouth Academy like this 
was Beaumont. See, he didn't get the sword when he was down there. He brought it with him. Joe Slater and also the bees tell us that he took the sword to Innsmouth Academy, figuring they would know what to do with it. Annabelle Usher says that she had no idea what to do with it, and that somebody broke through all the wards. We can even see this depicted in-game. Don't believe me? Well, maybe you should pay more attention to the loading screens. Eleanor Franklin speaks of a storm separate the fog, a storm that must have been conjured to aid Beaumont in taking Innsmouth Academy, as cleverly depicted in this loading screen. The turning point for the fight must have been when Beaumont took control of the familiars. We know that he can control the familiars because he sticks them on us when we're trying to activate the ward stones. Note these possessed familiars attacking. And as for the curious lack of dead bodies in Innsmouth Academy, well, what do you think the familiars were using to increase their numbers? Raw materials had to have come from somewhere. So now we can put together a succinct timeline of the fall of Innsmouth Academy. To finish this off by recapping, first, the fog rolls in. The siren song occurs, and no one within the Academy is affected. The track and field team, however, vanishes, dragged out to sea. Several teachers panic during this and decide to escape, unaware that creatures created by Archibald Henderson are waiting for them at the boathouse. A siege ensues, with the teachers trying to keep the students calm and present an air of normalcy by continuing the Halloween prom. The siege breaks when Beaumont takes control of the familiars, which run amok through the school, killing everybody except for Carter, Montag, and Usher. Beaumont steals the sword, but finds out he can't use it and realizes he has to go back. He finds this tunnel into the archives... And that's where we come into the picture. By the way, sorry if any of this sounded completely obvious to you. I completely missed all of it on my first and second playthroughs. <clears throat> anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then in increasing order of importance, like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and contribute to us on Patreon. Like these fine folks... With special thanks to Jockaroon and Mike's Mind. $3 gets you in the credits and $5 gets me to read your name. And if you did not enjoy this video, then I'll fight you. I'll do it. I'll fight you.